In my opening statement tonight, media's make or break moment. Now, since the 80s, Sri Lanka has been grappling to understand the effects of the media. It was mainly focused on three key areas such as television, radio and the newspapers in that day and age. This meant that the public did not have a platform to say what they felt and wanted. So we just utilize those mediums to understand what's happening with our country. Where are our leaders? What are they doing? And which part of the country and the world is heading? Most of the time, our voice was limited to the ballot box. So when we heard about this, what Sri Lankans thought at that time was undoubtedly tied to an election result. The media was responsible for providing all sides to the story to the public and keeping any opinions from the presenters and news anchors like us to ourselves, which means I would have never been able to do this program back then. This was very much changed with the arrival of social media. No longer does the public have to be trapped in a few television stations or radio stations or newspapers. They can very much be the truth seekers themselves. Social media indeed changed this landscape to an unrecognizable state. However, with that change, the media changed as well from just providing the news, which is notable events, weather and sports. They added another sector, the opinion portion of things. Yes, now we have a selected few who test the public's view and then come, on, come and share their viewpoints in these shows like right here on Get Real. This is where things start to get tricky. However, Opinions are a crucial portion of today's change in mindset and the direction of a society. Take a look at Sri Lanka. Go on any social media platform. What do you see? There's a plethora of views and opinions by the public in the forms of meme statuses, narrative pieces and whatnot. And if you analyze most of it, it is leaning towards liberal thinking. Why? Simple. Even in Sri Lanka, the majority of media is left-leaning. Even within our own group, the Dharana Media Network, while this program has been labelled alongside with myself as an uh, arrogant, Fox Newsy type bootlicker of the government, our sister newspaper and magazine has been labelled as very progressive, liberal and forward-thinking, whereas we both are doing the same thing, providing a viewpoint, a different aspect to a story. That itself should tell you something about what we are trying to do here at the Derana Media Network. I have the total freedom to say anything I want as long as I take responsibility as the talk show host. It's the same for everyone else. The news does their own thing. They have the journalistic freedom to pretty much bring in whatever the story they want. And what happens on the ground? Whenever they practice their journalistic freedom, the management gets hammered because at that moment, right up until that moment, what does the liberal latrine say? No media freedom, no media freedom, no media freedom. All the, the owners of these organizations are not providing. So here in Derana, uh, our chairman, Mr. Dilip Javira, he provides, you know, doesn't poke his finger. And the news goes and does their own thing. And whatever the nonsense that they come up with, he gets blamed. So at that moment, the public wants the chairman to come back and start, you know, controlling the media. You got to pick yourself, you know, what do you want? Do you want him to control the media or not? And that itself shows we don't have a particular agenda but the agenda of the people. Every one of us living on this planet is biased towards something. This is something I've been saying all throughout. We are biased towards our religion, families, jobs, political parties, and our way of life. There isn't a person on the planet who isn't unbiased. So a bunch of biased people seeking unbiasedness is a joke to me. Technology has grown to levels where we can seek the truth ourselves. For example, Get Real is not an unbiased show. It's an opinion show. This means I, the host, is asking my viewers to stop by and listen to what I have to say and that it's my opinion. As of now, my viewpoint aligns with the conservative thinking. Hence, this program comes off as biased towards the government. It isn't biased towards the government, but to the ideology of a conservative viewpoint. 
So I provide my side and ask you, the viewer, whether it makes sense. And if it does, let's talk. If anyone is coming to watch my show thinking, oh wait, I get unbiased coverage from Greg Trio. I've got news for that person. At the beginning of the show, we carry a disclaimer saying the show is an opinion-based program, which means it is biased towards something and challenges the viewer, which is you, to rethink your conventional thinking. So I am challenging the status quo, the liberal left-leading thinking in Sri Lanka who's piggybacking on the global viewpoints as most of the global views are leaning towards the left. So it's not as if we thought about these liberal views by ourselves by analyzing whether that thinking is better for our country. What we see in this day and age is that because it's happening in the West, so we think it's the best for us here in the East as well. I'm challenging the conventional thinking and the stereotypical way of thinking and ask you to rethink your stance. This way, I believe we can learn from each other and open our eyes to things we never deemed. In that way, we better our lives rather than going with the flow and living a very unfulfilled life. All right, I got a lot more to discuss tonight with my special guest, Mr. Laksar Vikramage, the Deputy Chairman and the CEO of the Dirana Media Network, which means is my boss. I'll be on my best behavior. Not so much. But before that, uh, I got another person who's on his best behavior tonight, Mr. Dhani Dutanam, as I'm looking all prim and proper. Good to see you, Dhani Um You are relatively young. Yes. <laughs> uh, 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 and you come from a, a, a different sect uh, of the society, the younger generation, who is pretty much to take uh, you know, control of this country in the future. Now, your viewpoints and most of the viewpoints of your, your peers do not align. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a more conservative thinking, uh, you know, country first, Sri Lanka first kind of an approach, whereas lots of, uh, of your peers are towards uh, a liberal thinking where, you know, let the West come and do everything. Uh, what kind of challenges do you face in terms of, you know, trying to get this message across and try to give a different viewpoint uh, to even with your friends? All right. Uh, uh, an important question. I think a lot of challenges are faced by someone who would uh, accept a different sort of viewpoint to what is happening uh, in the majority of instances, which is probably why you have that question stepping in also. But I think the reasoning as to why I would come there is, uh, is a harms analysis, basically. Because this liberal, I, I don't like to use this word, but this mob mentality that is coming particularly from Western media and where the West is now suffering the consequences of it. Uh, we see those harms here. And we see those harms in multiple facets, in things like locking down the country. It's a very uh, wave mentality where the mob mentality basically and that that the mob mentality's primary source of you know the fuel is that they find someone their target who they can attack and that inherently is fulfilling and so that that is the challenge and i think yeah so uh, what exactly are you focusing on uh, on the real story tonight and what exactly are, are you trying to uh, give a different uh, you know picture to to our viewers yeah um, stemming from that, what we have identified throughout this show and what something that we have been very much talking about is the media. Now the term media has been used as a blanket to cover so many different channels of presenting information and entertainment content. The winners of this medium, somewhat the pioneers, pursued a strategic process that dictates how the world sees certain countries. And Sri Lanka has fallen victim to this treatment. This is evident from the times the word third world was conceptualized. The History Channel identifies the French demographer Alfred Sowey as the person who coined the term Third World in a 1952 article titled Three Worlds, One Planet. Though it was primarily brought forward to identify the non-aligned nations during the World War, it later trickled down to the lesser developed nations in comparison to the majority of the political West. It is this second-hand and sometimes third-hand treatment that has built a subservient outset to most developing countries. The difference in treatment is not only faced by Asian countries, but also the African continent. This was well encompassed in Kenyan author Binyavanga Wainaina's book How to Write About Africa, which was a satirical writing on the portrayal of African culture by the Western media. In introduction to the book, he states in satire 
that when writing about his people, quote, among your characters you must always include the starving African who wanders the refugee camp nearly naked and waits for the benevolence of the West, unquote. However, in looking at more recent items, a consolidated agenda to disrupt the internal functioning of Sri Lanka has been witnessed. This was clearly witnessed from media reports on the government's steps taken to avoid hoarding of food by vendors, which would result in an artificial inflation of food prices. This was misconstrued as a food shortage when there was no such food shortage in the country. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaska declared a state of emergency over food shortages. Sri Lanka now, which is facing a financial emergency, the island country is running out of food and basic supplies. So Sri Lanka is in a full-scale economic meltdown. This was also identically same in the reporting of the ban on using chemical fertilizers. International media painted a heavily biased imagery about the country's economic and public policy initiatives. Attempts to secure organic fertilizer have run into a series of problems. The Sri Lankan government says farmer protests like this are instigated by the opposition and multinational chemical and fertilizer companies. But tens of thousands of farmers facing crop failures and lower yields say they are facing a battle for survival. For now, the farmers say their biggest concern is how they will feed their families in the coming months. But they will never tell you that the chronic kidney disease rates present within the country that led to this decision to be taken. A study done in 2016 by the WHO identified that in Sri Lanka, CKD is a serious public health problem that appears to disproportionately affect poor rural farmers in hot climates. It will never be told to you that in this area, studies have found that 98% of the consumed water is groundwater, directly open to chemical fertilizers and pesticides. It will never be told to you that an overwhelming number of nutrition experts are supporting this endeavor by the Sri Lankan government. And it will never be shown to you that like in big pharmaceutical issues, Big chemical fertilizer companies have a vested interest in shooting these efforts in the foot. These companies were eloquently described by environmental activist Dr. Vandana Shiva as the poison cartel. Uh, the UN asked me to be part of the framing of the convention uh, uh, protocol on biosafety. It's called the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. I witnessed throughout all that time not just in the negotiations, the power of, I call them the poison cartel, they call themselves crop life. And I smile and say, they're not crop life because they don't know a crop and they know nothing about life. And I know they will bring pressure on your government in every way. They even brought pressure on President Obama when poor Michelle Obama grew an organic garden in the White House and then crop life wrote, to President Obama and said, ruin, stop this problem thing. It brings bad reputation to us. Unfortunately, a negative line of reporting was abundant in multiple news outlets, even from India as well, which begs the question as to what a balanced opinion is, given the drastic economic and social impacts unfounded claims such as these have on Sri Lanka. In this context, assessing how Sri Lankan media frames its own issues is quite important. When looking at just the past week, it is extremely rare that the public gets to witness a positive story of the country's growth forward. Leading news sources such as CNN and MSNBC fell prey to this form of thinking once former President Donald Trump left office. 2016 was CNN's most watched year ever. They experienced an astounding 76% boost in ratings and then broke their own record again in 2017. MSNBC experienced even more explosive growth with the arrival of Trump on the scene. In 2016, the outlet nearly doubled its viewership, but it didn't stop there. The network has broken their own viewership records every single year since 2015. Trump is a con. Programs like New Day with Chris Cuomo, CNN Tonight with Don Lemon, The Rachel Maddow Show, and Morning Joe all contributed to the explosive growth and all had one thing in common. They milked the Trump campaign and presidency for every ounce of ratings that they could. President Trump. President Trump. President Trump. President Trump. President Trump. 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 The Trump campaign. Trump campaign. The Trump campaign. The Trump campaign. Trump campaign. It's the Trump campaign. Donald Trump. Trump Russia. Trump campaign. The Trump campaign. The Trump campaign. Trump campaign. Everything changed, however, when Trump was banned from social media in January of 2021 and left office soon after. It only took about 50 days for CNN to lose 1.6 
million of their primetime viewers. That's a drop of 36% in only a few weeks. The story over at MSNBC was the same. They experienced a 41% decline between March of 2020 and 2021. An internal and external evaluation of the perception the media builds is an essential aspect for our country to pay attention to. If the local media doesn't take the side of the country, it is questionable as to who else will. I'm pretty sure my, these are some of the core aspects that you will also be asking our guest tonight, uh, the, the head of this organization. It is going to be a very interesting conversation. Uh, let's see, there are a lot of criticism towards our network as well, so I'm trying to get some ideas and answers uh, from that. Um, the CEO uh, and the deputy chairman of the Therana Media Network will be here right after the short commercial break. You're watching Get Real. Be right back.